Before we start this video, I want to give a huge thank you to Ambos for supporting this channel. In case you don't know, Ambos is a learning platform designed to empower medical students all around the globe with the best tools to learn medicine. They will be launching their USMLE Step to CK Self-Assessment Week from May 3 to May 9. Participation is completely free and all you need to do is sign up using the links below. Additionally, Ambos has given this channel a two-month membership to give away among my subscribers. Rules for participation will be discussed later in this video. Alright, what's up guys, welcome back to the channel, Santiago AQ over here and today we're having another episode of Study Vlog, the series where we break down the tips, tricks and skills to study medicine better. And in today's video we'll be tackling a long requested topic, anatomy. Because I don't know about you, but anatomy was one of those subjects that was tough to learn at the beginning. To be honest, I actually hated it for my first couple of med school years. But with time I realized that my aversion to the subject actually came from an ineffective way of studying not from the subject itself. Once I fixed that, actually, I started enjoying it quite a bit. So what I'm gonna do in this video is take you through the four-step method that I eventually developed to make sense of anatomy and start enjoying the whole learning process. But before we get to that, you have to understand why so many people struggle with anatomy. And of course, I can't speak for everyone here, but in my experience, it's because they're in class or they're reading and they get shown something like this. So they go ahead and start reading everything. And given that they know that this is gonna pop up in their test, they focus very heavily on trying to memorize everything that's on the slide. And well, with tools like flashcards and space repetition, they may even get away with it. But pretty soon, all the information that's on the slide is forgotten. And if you involve those students into more complex tasks, like identifying structures in a 3D model, you'll realize that they have actually a lot of gaps in their understanding of anatomy. Now, I think this happens mainly because of a lack of visualization, which is precisely the first step in my method. And this is probably, to be honest, the most important step. Because believe me, once you have a clear representation of the structures inside of your head, Describing them becomes like describing the furniture of your room. It's easy because you have a picture inside of your head and you just need to examine it and decompose it. But think for a second how hard it would be to describe a room that you've never seen, that you've only heard being described. It would probably be tremendously difficult. You would probably make all sorts of mistakes and the guy who has actually been there would pretty quickly realize that you don't know what the hell are you talking about. Well, the same thing happens with anatomy. If you fail to create a mental picture of the structures, you'll inevitably fail to truly understand the subject. And as a clutch, you'll start relying on all sorts of tools to make up for that fact, like endless flashcards. Now, in the same way that reading about a room is probably the hardest way to visualize it, reading about anatomy is also a non-optimal way to learn it. So yeah, in case it wasn't clear, books are probably amongst the worst strategies to learn anatomy. And again, that's not because of the books per se, it's because of the format. Trying to visualize complex anatomical structures through a motionless piece of paper with words is just not optimal. My advice? Try out videos. Especially the videos that give you a walkthrough of a 3D composition of the anatomical structures that you're studying, that show you exactly how things look from all sorts of angles, perspectives, and that have the ability to add and remove layers to help you visualize where the particular structures are embedded. Anatomy Zone, a YouTube channel with tons of free videos, is honestly the best resource I've found that does this. And I can honestly say that I've learned more than 90% of my anatomy straight from YouTube, not from books or classes. And well, Anatomy Zone is just an example. Other videos or platforms that take advantage of motion graphics to show you firsthand how stuff actually is are the way to go. I just love Anatomy Zone because it's free. And it's awesome. But again, all of that was to say that to learn anatomy, you first have to visualize what the hell is going on. Once you have that, then we move on to step number two. And step number two is to check. Because there's quite a gap between what you see in the screen and what your mind actually recreates and holds onto. And we're completely ignorant of that. So the only way to truly know if we learned or not is by checking. One thing I usually did with my students to make them aware of this fact is to make them draw the media steinum from a lateral view. And I emphasize the importance of keeping the right order of structures from anterior to posterior. And I just loved seeing how before starting they had this face of, this is way too easy. And then they went, hmm, wait a minute, is the aorta anterior or posterior to the vena cava? And exactly how far is it from the trachea? And wait a second, how up is the aorta going anyways? 
And that's the beauty of checking. It makes you realize of all of the gaps that you actually have that you were completely ignorant about. And yes, as far as I can tell, the best way to check if you learned or not is through drawing. But I wanna be clear, I don't mean drawing in the sense of, oh, you have to be Leonardo da Vinci and put attention to color and texture and aesthetics. None of that is really just about laying in paper your idea of how this stuff actually is. As an example, I'm showing you the drawings I did when learning about the GI system three years ago. As you can see, I'm no Leonardo da Vinci, but it doesn't matter. All I intended to do with these drawings is draw my understanding of the anatomy to, to check if I have gaps and if the things that I put on paper actually hold on with the same consistency as true anatomical structures. That's it. And I know doing this is quite time consuming, but believe me, the feedback that you get from doing this is truly invaluable. And also you end up with the best versions of notes you can have for anatomy. Up to this day, I still go back and check my drawings from three years ago to check on some, and to check or to explain some anatomical concepts like the Winslow hiatus. Now, step three is to remember. And this is one of the instances where I think that flashcards just rock. Again, just doing flashcards without visualizing anything will lead you nowhere. But once you understand the anatomy, flashcards will greatly help you make that content solid inside of your head. Now, my advice here is twofold. First, use the Anki tool that allows you to hide anatomical labels with boxes. This is, in my opinion, the best way to use Anki in anatomy. And second, use real anatomical images, not your drawings. Keep your drawings a way to process and check the information, but then go back and see the real images and practice with them as much as you can. And in case you're wondering, Ambos is my go-to platform to obtain neat anatomical images with labels to include in my flashcards. And that actually reminds me that in this video, we're doing another two month Ambos Plus membership giveaway to one of you guys. To participate, all you need to do is be a subscriber of this channel and leave a comment down below with the best tool you have personally found to study anatomy and a mail to contact you in case you win. But in any case, the last step in this method is to apply what you're learning. To do that, you just need to go and see how the stuff you're learning can be used in the real world. To be honest, nine out of 10 times that will be through some sort of diagnostic image. Diagnostic images have become the way doctors interact with anatomy 99% of times. And yes, that includes the surgeons as well, because for every appendectomy they do, they probably see three to four CT scans. And to do this, you don't have to go all balls to the walls trying to learn everything about CT scans and x-rays and start diagnosing pleural effusions, pneumothorax, nephrothiasis, no, none of that. You just need to try to familiarize yourself with how the structures are seen in a normal chest x-ray, in a normal abdominal CT and things of that sort. Believe me, if you get to understand how stuff usually is supposed to look, how the normal structures are seen in a normal CT, in a normal x-ray, learning the abnormal stuff later on will be 10 times easier. And well, that's it for this study vlog. Hope it was useful. As always, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next video.